So, um, I want to tell you uh, a bit process, and then I will offer you a program for today, uh, uh, um, as, and, and also um, drawing consequences from yesterday. So yesterday. Uh, because this time uh, we had two responsibilities, and we did, uh, and everybody trusted each other. We didn't clarify enough what we are really doing here. Maybe Giesen hoped somehow Bernd Schmidt will do it, and I thought, oh, Giesen, let him do what he knows what to do, and so we created a very complex situation, and my preparation was not appropriate for this complex situation because uh, my frame of reference um, was I'm at a point where I'm finishing my whole work and I'm now on a, on a level to tie everything together on a programmatic level. And certainly this is very abstract. I have all these practical models and uh, approaches to work with developed during these years and I, and I hoped uh, I can use this opportunity to have an English version of the overview of the programs. And, uh, and so I was not prepared enough, and I couldn't do that over the distance. M maybe we could have done more, really to clarify what is realistic here. And so fortunately, Giesen intervened and told me somehow this is not going to work. And, but uh, during the day, Gaston, yesterday I did not really clarify what are the frames of reference we try somehow to integrate that are not integratable. And during the day we struggled and I often felt a sense of desperation because I felt it, it's not a it will not be a satisfying uh, way if we stay with this frame of references. You have been very kind and very patient, and uh, when Giesen asked you what is what you want, then I felt this is wrong as well, because this is shifting responsibility to you. And I'm not in fond of shifting responsibility. Certainly it's our responsibility to, uh, to care for the program. Uh, but yesterday we, I didn't, I didn't have a concept how to do that. So, but what I learned from the concept, I will uh, uh, explain you next, is that uh, if you are not have not distance enough from the situation, don't try to solve the problem because you are caught in a frame of reference. So I learned to, to calm down uh, my desperation, and it helped me that you have been so friendly, and uh, f for example, Surya also sh demonstrated uh, loyal loyalty, and so emotionally I could keep it framed and let go of it. And so I, on yesterday went fine, um, it's the evening, and so I could have a good sleep. But this morning, 5.30, I woke up, and my unconscious mind was prepared to say, now, now you have to change the frame of reference. And uh, what I came up with while I was dressing and brushing my teeth and so is with the idea uh, we, we still have... Uh, different groups here with very different interests and they have been made promises to uh, in different directions that we could not keep not in this in this uh, work as the promises might have elicited expectations so whenever you want to escape from a dilemma you have to accept the loss and the loss is uh, to confess that we, maybe we have promised just too much. 
but instead of still drying it, uh, we have uh, I try to find the solutions that may do the best we can in this situation, and this is uh, skipping uh, the more programmatic parts I have prepared and referring um, to more uh, to a more content oriented concepts and explaining the concepts concepts to you uh, in a brief way and then do an exercise or some kind of experiential work. And I ch have chosen now uh, concepts that I hope for all of the interest, there's something in it that is interesting for you. And yeah, with that I somehow felt it's solvable. And my desperation uh, uh, faded and confidence came back. <laughs> and so I thought, uh, in order to illustrate that, I, I've developed a concept um, 30 years ago. This is a dilemma concept, and I will briefly outline the concept to you, and then uh, if you are interested in, we can dialogue a bit, and I, want, and, and I combine it with these reflections on yesterday. Does this sound right for you? Yes. Okay. So, if you you know you write this down, all our English material, videos, audios, uh, papers, charts, what every material we have in English, and these are full workshops from Oxford. Uh, you can access here and it's all free and you are invited to use it for yourself in any manner you can use it. So, 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, I didn't know how young I was. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> This is Julie Hay. She was the president of the European Association for Transactional Analysis at that time. And there was a, a new award, scientific award, they called it. And the first one was for me for this concept of the on dilemmata. <coughs> so I came to this concept because I was often satisfied uh, as, a, as a patient uh, in psychotherapy because uh, sometimes I struggled uh, with controlling myself in direction. I didn't know what, what the problem was, but I knew uh, somehow it's not going further that way. And I found psychotherapists uh, who wanted to do with me emotional work because this must be a, a, some kind of an emotional blockage, and because they, we didn't find something understandable, they had more and more hypotheses about this must be, have been very early, maybe on the belly, maybe on the past life. And if nothing worked, I felt more and more as a shifting uh, frustration that it, their concepts do not work on me. I was I seemed sicker and sicker some more. We did not, did not understand in what kind of entanglement I was, and I didn't understand it either. And maybe from this suffering a bit as a patient, I developed this concept of dilemmata. So a dilemma is a situation where you feel caught. In TA we have uh, uh, the concept, uh, Burn had the concept of corner game. So you somehow feel cornered, you stand in a corner and you, and it seems as if there is no way out. But this is only because you don't turn around. And, but as long as you don't know that you are standing in a corner, you try to find your way out where there is no way out. And, uh, and it's also based on, on a concept on schizophrenia, which I will not mention here. So, 
any try to solve the problem leads to still being or even more feeling caught. Maybe you have had, have had situations in your life, you know that feeling. And this non-solvability may be obviously to others. Maybe when, I, when we look at yesterday, uh, somebody who can, did, would have looked at the situation from outside would have been clear that this uh, cannot work if we have too much complexity and want to go in different direction at a time. <coughs> so this is an obvious dilemma. Also, uh, we didn't realize it until we got into the entanglements that came from this and more, got aware more of it. But sometimes, uh, if you work with somebody, this person cannot move, really. Uh, but you don't see an unsolvability. Because in your frame of reference, if you see that guy in the corner, and you look from outside, you don't know why he doesn't solve his problem. Because you don't, cannot see that his frame of reference is not yours. And he's not seeing the escape possibilities that you see. So if you have a colleague or a client uh, who is stuck, and you get a sense of this person is caught, and somehow you feel caught with helping this person, also you would like to do so, then you are probably in a dilemma. And this means there is a, within the frame of reference within which you try to come to a satisfying solution, uh, this is not possible. And then you probably will uh, switch back and forth in four stages of what I call the dilemma circle. So uh, I start with struggling. This is, I guess, what we all did somehow yesterday. Can you, can you share that? It somehow felt it's not the right way to do it, but we want to solve it. But when we try to solve it, it doesn't feel like this is a way really to a solution and feeling confident that we will come to a solution. This is struggling. So this means activity that is not really meaning for you. And if you ask yourself in a self-diagnosis, am I confident, uh, you would come to the conclusion, no, I'm not confident but I don't know what to do else. And struggling is uh, exhausting. And then from time to time, you switch off not to be too exhausted. And people have very different strategies to switch off. So they drink too much, or so they switch to a love affair, or, or whatever. Uh, but it's, it's uh, ex exhaustion, I call it exhaustion because you come back from that not in a uh, renewed way. As I told you this night, I g went to bed, I gave up and still hoped there will come a solution, but I didn't stick to the old frame of reference. And then in the morning I, c I w uh, came back and I was, um, refreshed, I was able to have a new look at the situation. If I would have gone to bed in, and drank too much and still in a struggling mood, I would have woken up in the morning still feeling hot. But because you are sitting here and I have to do something, I would have come back still struggling and thus supporting the frame of reference and inviting you also into co-struggling. And then my, maybe we, uh, we have a group dynamic process trying to shift responsibility or try to deal with frustration or whatever. Uh, and this is uh, a way to do something different but not what the original goal was. 
And many in an area where you are in a dilemma, you will very often switch back and forth between struggling and being exhausted. And if you do too long, you get into more depression. And if you are the, on the active side, we call it active depression. And when your wings go down, then it's passive depression. And gradually, the longer you do that, you burn out. So, if I would ask you what you really feel inside and you would, could be honest to yourself, you feel despair. And despair is a word that causes despair. This is why we do not like it. And despair must not be very intensive. Despair also might be a subtle feeling of we will not get, any, get anywhere this way. And if you dare to is despair, then you have a competence because, as I said yesterday, for me, feelings indicate an understanding of reality. And despair is a feeling for not solvability that indicates not solvability. This is why we all should learn to deal with despair and to share despair, if possible, very early, so that we do not get too much into trouble until we understand we are in a, a, on a dilemma way. So this is why I've written a, a, a paper together with a colleague on the subject despair as a professional competence. And despair, but it's not easy somebody who uh, despair, you, you, you don't want to be despaired. And if I as a consultant tell somebody this is, I don't know what the problem is, but the way you act indicates to me that it's not solvable for you in this way. It doesn't make sense that you try harder. Uh, give up, and I'm with you. Both is important. Not give up and uh, good luck. I don't want to be buzzed and not be drawn in in your dilemma. I'm with you, but I don't have a solution either. And uh, after giving up, we have probably a chance to find a new meta standpoint or relax enough to have a fresh look and approach the same reality from a new frame of reference and suddenly solvability is possible. So there's a paradox thing that you have to give up in order to approach a solution. Some technically oriented people say, oh, oh wonderful, I, I quickly give up and then I have a solution. This is struggling. On the, on <laughs> so uh, it's not easy to teach yourself and teach other people really to give up because you fear the loss and you have and we and there's I, I, usually I say it's always there's always a bunch of dilemmata not only one if I despair then I have to accept a loss and the frame of reference is if I would not despair and struggle further I have a chance not to suffer from this loss, but as long as I try to avoid this loss, I get even closer and lose more. And this is also applicable to companies. Many companies do not accept in time that there is no solution for the way they are try to solve their problems until all resources uh, are exhausted, and then. Uh, it, it's, an ob it's got an objective unsolvability, and say, then they got insolvent. So you also need a kind of spiritual attitude to accept this. Maybe this is closer to you than in, in, in our Western culture, to be able to give up. 
and, be, uh, and open yourself up for new inspirations uh, that give you new chances for new frame of reference that do not imply these unsolvabilities. Uh, if you if you have a, a major developmental needs in your life for which you only have a dilemma frame of reference, then you might, uh, and you somehow intuitively you know that you might avoid this part of your life. For example, you have a spouse. If whenever you get into a relationship, you get into dilemma da, and then you can try to to solve the problem by not uh, uh, starting a new relationship, uh, but this doesn't solve the dilemma frame of reference you have for relationships. So if it's an important developmental need, then from you will get back just trying again, but as long you uh, haven't changed your frame of reference, the situation is not changed. But it might happens that the context has changed, uh, it's a different life phase, and maybe one of the elements that uh, together produce the unsolvability is a way, then it might be still a way. I always wondered why people can develop without my concept on dilemma. But this has to do with, uh, fortunately, life gives you often a chance uh, to find somehow your way out of dilemma time. So, this is the dilemma circle. Like, uh, there may be few instances in our life, uh, sorry, a few instances in our life wherein uh, the dilemma, uh, we may, might be in a state of dilemma where the issue is solvable. But I think what I gather from your point is if it is unsolvable, accepting the fact that it is unsolvable and not uh, you know, spending too much of time worrying about it itself is a solution. Yes, basically. within the frame of reference. Within the frame of reference, if it's unsolvable. Yeah. Uh, it could be issues like, you know, it could be even, uh, say, maybe one thing I can talk about is there are some clear unsolvable universal issues like some of the um, philosophical questions like, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where would I go to? <laughs> I mean, if I try to, I want to get an answer today and uh, I want to get an answer that's 100% correct. If I'm going to say that, uh, I'm not yeah. safe. Yes. Yes, and it's something in between, because this kind of metaphil uh, spiritual attitude may be an avoidance. So you have to decide from situation to situation what's the case. But it should invite you to think about uh, the frame of references. What are my ideas? Uh, what is the situation? What is the problem? What are the influences I have to deal with? I do not try to take action before I'm, I've not drawn a map of the logic of my problem and the logic of my ways to try to, to solve it. So it's an invitation into taking a meta stance. The problem, uh, I have a colleague who is a, a logic professor and he's a specialist on dilemmata. He has found 32 types of dilemmata, logically. Uh, and I've discussed with him that it's, maybe he knows how to work with 72 types of dilemmata and he has a big institute on that. But for normal people, that's not a solution to the problem. That's a, that's a way to struggle with the situation on a meta level. So I said, um, see, uh, let's try to get a sensibility to the stages of dilemma circle and get feedback on that. Do you feel that I'm on a, with my activities on a way you feel confident that I can solve it? Also, I do not I cannot explain what the solution is, but does it intuitively uh, feel like it's, it's a solvable problem? Because many of the de developmental problems are solvable, although we don't know what the outcome will be. Or do you f feel that um, 
there's nothing uh, you can, uh, I, I can not really uh, get further with it. And then it indicates to me this might be a, a struggling and it, and then do not take too much action, but then f try to find, to give up in a positive way, not in an avoidance way, to be with others or to study the logic of your dilemma. Very often we do not really find the logic of it. So we have a logical problems with the logic of dilemmata. And what happens very often is that I work with somebody and just invite this person to give up and be with him or her. Because one of the unsolvability uh, equations is um, I have to abandon you because I do not want to be drawn in your dilemmata. But when I care for you and stay with you, then this means I support your neurotic way to deal with things. And this has to be differentiated as well, this frame of reference says, I can promise you when I feel it inside, the confidence that there will be a solution, but not the way you are doing it. And I will be with you. And this might help the person to give up, even accept losses, uh, because there is new confidence that something new will come out of it. And very often, when I do this in a seminar, I've, sometimes I, I, I had, when I had a four-day seminar, it's the first day I had to fight with somebody um, to tell him you have to give up. And uh, the person finds many ways to promise to give up, but doesn't give up. And I have to, to push the person into despair. And the person thinks, I'm doing it to the person, but I'm only making of it what is there. And, it's, and I have to explain this frame of reference. And it helps a lot. Uh, this is one of the concepts, also the consequences are, uh, very much emotionally and physically, uh, it's important to explain the concept to somebody because then to understand what is going on helps a lot to give up emotionally and to accept. And som sometimes it happens that there's a dream during the night that is changing something, or the next morning the situation is changed and we do not know what happened. So. But now my client is no longer interested to find out the logic of the dilemma. Even have somehow the feeling, uh, maybe I just awoke from a nightmare. And then you have the problem, did I do a dilemma work or not? And you do not know. So it's a tricky, tricky kind of work to work with dilemma. But it, I find it's very helpful. And. Uh, so, and that's what I got the prize for, is one is that uh, if you approach it from a, in, in an intellectual way, uh, then you can explain yourself how did I construct the unsolvability, like I did this morning concerning yesterday. This was easy. But sometimes you cannot, you don't know what it is. And you, then you have to work on a process level and on a relationship level and uh, on an emotional and spiritual support level. And this might work. So you can, th the most important thing is if somebody is caught in an insolvability, don't blame him. You know what I mean? We had, maybe we had, an example here yesterday. And uh, I always was furious at consultants and psychotherapists uh, who uh, made responsible the client f for not moving within the frame of reference they had to offer. And my consequence is say, that with, with what I know, I cannot help you. But this doesn't mean that uh, you are crazy 
or stubborn. I never use the terms resistance. Mara Selvini Palazzoli is a big uh, Italian family therapist. She had an assembly of 800 psychoanalysts. And she said to them, she was a tough lady, she said to them, Resistance? Do you know what that is? That is the stupidity of the psychotherapist. <laughs> 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 they, have, they have not been amused. <laughs> So, and this now has to do with, uh, with attitudes. So it's important, and this has also to do with the equal eye level communication. Uh, if you do not move forward, I firmly believe, even if there are games going around, like he played a bit with me yesterday. As a transactional analyst, I learned how to confront these games. But I do not do any longer. Because I firmly believe that he's doing this as long as he does not experience a potent invitation in something better. And if there is something better, people will take it. This is my understanding of people. And if they don't take anything, then the reason is, in their frame of reference, it's not good enough to solve their problem. And then we should build a coalition of not knowing, suffering, and also I'm ready to suffer with, suffer with my client, not, not in the extent uh, he is suffering because it's his life, but I'm ready to share the suffering that comes from being caught in a dilemma without blaming the person, but saying, see, I feel caught, and then I do a self-analysis and show that I, I'm ready to despair and that I'm ready to suffer instead of trying to, uh, to struggle. And this modeling can help the client to give up struggling and to learn from me and build a coalition with me that it's okay to reframe from uh, struggling and to despair and send something new comes in and we both may not know in advance what it will be. So we are open to it. We can do this for a certain limit only, sir. What? For a period of certain limit we can give up and we can console the next person. Yeah. But if this happens for a long duration of time, is it necessary to take the concerned person to in, in a, just in a general uh, family situation or in an organizational structure I am speaking about? It's not necessary that every time I have to give up and uh, uh, it, it's not right, you know, that an uh, opponent also must have the mindset to just uh, change his attitude, isn't it? If not, uh, keep on. If, if we take uh, two persons, if I am submissive to that person every time, how long we can just do this? Yeah. Uh, certainly after a certain period of time, we do become reluctant and we won't be in that mindset to give up, you know, sir. Mm -hmm. So what could be the uh, uh, solution in that situation? <laughs> there is not always a solution. That's what the dilemma concept is saying. Okay. Then you have to decide uh, to despair and, and to openly despair and to give up and tell the person without blaming or tell the organization, I'm not ready to share any longer your strategy because I believe it solves to a uh, dis disaster. It, 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 uh, it's shifting to a disaster and uh, I will not show my solidarity with you sharing uh, your way to the disaster. I try to show my solidarity to you, telling you that we have to look at the frame of reference and dare to despair in time that we have a chance that something is uh, living beyond. But it's what we always only can do is giving an offer. And, and you have certainly to check uh, your strengths and your confidence. And when you lose confidence and do not find a way to get Re rearrange confidence enough for you, 
then you cannot be helpful and it's, then it's very sad but you have to give up. Um, and yeah, and then you have to find out whether you are ready to give up also. And sometimes if you give up, uh, this is a, the despair is a, uh, the door out, is the out uh, uh, exit door. And sometimes it's only for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm finished with the concept. Let me just do some little remarks, and this is especially for society and companies. Um, and maybe even for personal lives, how com dealing with complexity and dilemmata go together. I, I believe, especially in organizations, sometimes under complex solutions for complex problems uh, lead to more, more and more overwhelming challenges from complexities that you do not meet. And the more you stick to under complex solutions to complex questions, the more solvable problems with adequate complexity turn into, dile into dilemmata. So, and this is sometimes a problem with leaders of organizations. They want to have simple, because they are, feel very much stressed, they want to have a turnaround of complex questions that have uh, been a, a pile over months or years, and then when they try to have a quick turnaround, it's usually an under-complex solution that uh, leads even more into a dilemma. So what we try to do is despair in time and invite others to despair in time. And there is a, it's a vicious circle. The more uh, dilemmata on different topics in your company you have, the more uh, explodes complexity, where, where you should do something at the same time. And so dilemmata produce complexity. And this is a kind of complexity that doesn't have to be there if you could resolve the dilemma logics. But sometimes you just have to give up and start anew somewhere. And it, then maybe it's a chance things get simple, but you must to be ready to suffer and to accept losses to have a chance for a new start. And this is a dilemma as well because many People think they can avoid the losses and they don't they can solve the problem without desperation. So this was my concept on dilemmata. Can you uh, did you understand it? Yes. yes. Uh, can you relate it somehow to yourself or to the stages of your life professionally, privately? The microphone. No, it's it's something. We change. I know how it. How it's. Um, can you fit the whole concept into a management perspective and give an example or a situation, a role play per se? A role play? No, it has to come. How to identify like if uh, we are whether I am in a dilemma or I am, or am I dealing with somebody who is in a dilemma? How do I identify this? Because it is very simple. I, I presume that most of us, if not everybody, will go through this at some point in time of our careers and uh, we might be in it or we might get sucked into it or we, we might be in it and we might be sucking others into it. 
how do I identify this? How do I caution myself from not yeah. getting sucked into the dilemma of somebody else and then suffering the same? Yeah, I'm, so this indicates to me that the dilemma a concept is interesting for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I cannot do uh, the training on that right now because we are still on a, on a tasting, in a tasting mode. But if you go on the website, uh, in the Oxford seminar some years ago, I did a, a dilemma work with somebody, a whole consultation, and I gave explanations and we discussed it. Uh, if you don't find it yourself, give us an email and we give you the specific link. So in the Oxford, uh, there are, uh, have been three, two workshops of three days in Oxford. So we have seven or eight learning conversations around the different topics. And there's also one on dilemma in English. So maybe this may help you. Thank you. So, because if I would try that now, we will soon end up in a dilemma. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I don't feel despair right now. So <laughs> it's enough for this time. So, uh, questions on the concepts or sharing ideas about yourself only for a short period of time, but uh, there should be a chance for you. In organization constructs, these dilemmas, so we are, it's a walk of life every day. Yeah. So is there any mechanism we can intervene? Yes. Uh, whereby the organization should have a mechanism if there is a confusion or there is a challenges or dilemmas, how the teams have to approach? I'm not sure with, uh, whether it's true that uh, you have to deal with dilemma every day. What you have to deal with uh, is with um, ambiguity and different tendencies. You have somehow to balance. Uh, but it's only a dilemma if you come to a solution the way you want to solve it will not be lead to a satisfying end. Okay. So it's so we have to differ. When it says um, in my history, whenever I lecture on dilemmata, people put every difficult problem into dilemma. Says, but it's not. But certainly, uh, what's the usual ways you have to deal with as a manager is you have things to integrate and you have not easy the logic how to integrate them and on on the on a lower logic uh, it's not solvable but if you go to a higher logical have more a more complex way to de deal with it it's not unsolvable so you do not need the dilemma concept for that unless you stay on a on a specific level it more and more will turn first into felt dilemmata and then into real incarnated dilemmata within the organization. But um, to be specific on that, we must have specific cases. It can be taught in general. Shuria? Yeah, yeah keep it on, so do not. Uh, I would like to share a small consultancy experience which often comes yes, to us. Certainly. To clarify if I got the concept right. Often organizations invite uh, consultancy or training uh, and initially it looks like people are not motivated, they're not driven, so we need something. And then finally it comes, finally when we meet people we find basically the issue is high attrition. People are they're not able to retain people. And they expect say a day or two of training to solve that problem. Right. And uh, when we say no, it's not possible at that level. Uh, but they insist do something and the sort of thing and finally can even, in, with all full awareness we do it, then the organization finally doesn't make any effect, then it seems to you know, get into a despair mm -hmm. position. Is that a, a sort of a dilemma that... Yes. It, it, it is a dilemma when your frame of reference is saying you have only two options. Yeah. 
yeah. is doing it without con uh, uh, meaningful consequences or refusing it and then do not help anybody. Yeah. And if you stick to these equations, then this constructs yes. a dilemma. Then you either do it and struggle, or you don't do it, uh, then you, are, it's, it's a, you can cause this an avoidance. And you feel that you are not doing what you could do. Absolutely. But within the frame of reference, you cannot do what you want to do. Yes. And so what uh, you should do then is exactly, maybe you find somebody who is powerful enough to do something, and intelligent enough or sensible enough to understand what your dilemma is, and share the perspective on dilemma with him and say, I would like to do something for you, but when I do it the way you order it from me, then I would not do a favor to you. Also, I'm scared that if I don't do it, you think I'm not competent or not uh, ready to serve. Yeah. This is my dilemma, and I want to be with you, but I cannot do my service to you in the frame of reference we have up to now. Are you available to discuss different frame of reference from which, uh, and then I, I use, you use your capacity of self-diagnosis, we call it social diagnosis in TA, and I use my diagno uh, capacity to diagnose, to find out whether we feel competent and this, this can work out fine. And then we do an experiment, and we also share with the others what our how we try to escape from the dilemma and invite them uh, to diagnose whether they feel caught, they feel struggling, they f start to feel conf confidence and they have now ideas, uh, maybe intuitively that this can work out this way. I don't know. Yeah, some clients are willing to go that extra mile and then explore and see what could work. That is go beyond yeah. their frame of reference. Whereas many of them, Still, want to stay in the frame of right. that training can solve all for organization problems. Right. Then they are still stuck in that dilemma, it leads to despair. And right. And and one part of a, a dilemma frame of reference uh, for offers for service is, uh, I have to work on th on the contract I'm that is offered to me. And this means empathy to the client to go with the definition of level of problem and the way to solve it. We even have been taught that the power is within the patient, within the organization, but the stupidity is also in the patient and in the organization. And we, uh, and we should escape from this frame of reference and say we are entitled to tell what, how we look at it and make an uh, active offer, how it, there could be a solution, and not expect from them that they find out if this contract will not work, what would be a better contract. We are the specialists for that, to offer optional contracts, and it's totally okay to actively offer a contract. Thank you. Can we also actively pitch in with this uh, dilemma? Maybe, I think, can we go back to the first slide, the uh, dilemma? The circle? Uh, probably, I think uh, one thing I think Bernd is trying to tell us is to try and see if our dilemma is fitting into any of these four escape groups, avoiding, or uh, probably we are in the process of struggling, exhaustion, turning off, and uh, disparaging. In this case, what would it be? <coughs> it's probably avoidance, right? What he has done. Uh, going ahead with the training program. Yeah. I think he knows that it doesn't work. Uh, sometimes the problem is yeah. uh, very often you do not know when you start. You've, uh, most of the dilemma are diagnosed when you are in the midst of it. Yeah. And, um, and, for, and if we are not trained uh, to be aware of despair very early... But he, I think he, he was very clear. He even told the client very clearly yeah. the two-day training program would not uh, solve the problem. Yeah. But, so, but yeah, this was totally okay. Yeah. Uh, your your comment so leads me where, to another point. Where exactly uh, would you put it uh, in this? Uh, is it uh, why does it lead to despair? He has not avoided the problem. He has told the client. I just did not understand you. No, no. What I'm saying is he has not avoided the problem. He knows 
a training program cannot solve the issue. He has told that to client also. So yes. probably in this case, he is not at, uh, uh, he has given it to the client and client has taken the decision as you have rightly put it. Client decides everything and so it is, uh, so is it a case of dilemma first? Um. You are addressing now different phases yeah. of the process. Please uh, do not try now to put everything into that yeah. schema. Do it the vice versa. We have a situation and then we try to make sense of a situation and then we check whether we can use this uh, concept to explain the situation. But do not, uh, do not switch into looking at everything through, through, through this concept. Okay. But but it was uh, uh, your comment helped me t uh, t um, to say something about when, that usually when you meet a dilemma, you are in, already in the midst of it, and you have already created a dilemma culture around you, or have have been sucked in to a dilemma culture, and this is why you you know you have. To be sensible to your own despair and losing confidence, and learn to do something about. And the more the Yasos are desperate, the less they want you to give up. And this is a dilemma too. And I have made good experience just to uh, ex uh, give to self exploration, explain the schema and then people start to understand. And they do not feel rejected. When I do not share their, their dilemma framework, they can differentiate between sharing their dilemma framework and being related to them. So this was dilemma. Certainly we could do a whole day on dilemma, <laughs> but it should only should be a, a taste for it. Yeah. Now, number one is uh, uh, I have a mentor. You have? I have a mentor. Yeah. And uh, he gives an idea to me. Yeah. I uh, thing is I accept that idea only when I'm convinced with that idea. Yes. So uh, I just want to know whether this is uh, whether uh, this comes under dilemma. Uh, this when, this when can be the starting point of a dilemma. Okay. When my uh, mentor gives me an idea and. Uh, I uh, I accept it, assuming that it will be successful. Yeah. And I I accept it. Yeah. And I I assume that I accept it. Yeah. And then I go to the second stage where I don't want to try it because I just assumed it. I didn't accept it completely. Yeah. So at the third point, uh, what I'll do is at one point of time I'll think to myself that okay, this idea won't be uh, successful. Yeah. So I'll just drop it out. Yeah. And at one point of time, if you go back and I come up with another solution, mm -hmm. and if I try to do the same thing, and I'll find the conflict between the first idea and the second idea, and I, 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 I came to know that uh, the first idea is a good one. Mm -hmm. So would you put this under the dilemma uh, situation? Or? It may turn into a dilemma unless you get distance enough to do something different with the same question. So what you could do is, if you don't if you don't have a restriction within yourself, to say, see, I, I do not, uh, with my understanding of what you are expecting me to do, I do not feel confidence uh, because either I did not understand it or I do not have the experience because I did not try it yet, whatever. But uh, I. Um, I account for the fact that I do not feel confidence and do not have orientation of myself. So, is, um, and still I want to try to find a solution for it. Is that okay for you? So you make a meta contract with him. Yeah. And then you say, okay, let's maybe, for example, if you ha have clear instructions what to do, you say, okay, I just do it. And then I, uh, report the experience I had with that to you, and then we look whether it's turning out fine and make it make sense to you. 
And if for a long time it will not make sense for me, I'm not the right person for you. So you have to be ready to accept the loss in order to be free. If you do not believe that you can accept the loss. But you need communication figures that make it acceptable to the other person. If you only say, I just do it, but I don't believe in it, uh, or you do something what we call agitation, you act as if, but meaningless, or you, do, you are avoiding it, and the other uh, person expects you to do something, then you get into trouble. But, but if you learn to comment that on a meta level and invite relationship on a meta level, say, I'm ready to try it because you are my mentor, uh, what do you think, how long should I try it? And I should be somehow convinced. And then I tried for three weeks, and I come back, and then we talk about it. And when I'm not convinced, we f try to find out why I am not convinced, and why he thinks I could be convinced. And if we tried long enough without the frame of reference is changing and open up to a solution development, then somehow we should be ready to separate without um, blaming each other. Change of from frame of reference in the sense uh, me getting into his frame of reference. No, uh, mostly a new frame of reference is a meta frame of reference. Okay. Saying, okay, this is an area where obviously somehow we construct together a reality that for, is not for me acceptable to do something. Although it might be reasonable for you. But there may be other areas. Can we focus on other areas? Not be stuck to this area, for example. Or... For this area, maybe you can do the same thing you want to try with some, somebody else. And we watch together the re solutions, and then I compare what this person finds as a solution with my ideas. And then maybe we can learn from that. And maybe next time I find what I needed to make a solution of it. Or you find why this person can do it, but it's not for everybody to do it. And you, you ignore that it's not good for me to do it. And then you have a learning contract with each other on a meta level. And then the chance is high that you do not get caught in the dilemma frame of reference together. And uh, the second uh, one is uh, uh, struggling to uh, prioritize things. Pardon? Struggling to prioritize. Yeah. Understanding the difference between importance and urgency of a single uh, agenda or a single uh, or a single problem. Mm -hmm. I, I always uh, we always get uh, if the problem is important, if that particular situation is important or urgent. Yes. And that's, uh, this thing comes under a dilemma. And uh, the thing is, uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, Important uh, things are, uh, uh, we have yeah. to take care of important things rather than taking care of uh, right. uh, urgent things. Right. So I, uh, personally, I, what I have for this, I, I, I start my day with the agenda, and I get confused with the important and urgency things. And I, I, I uh, the final, at the end of the day, I miss few of them by getting into that, whether which one to do it, and the which one to yeah. uh, take care of it later, the prioritizing, I'm asking. So I believe yeah. prioritize comes under that. Yeah, then you have to um, <coughs> check your frame of reference. When somehow it, it sounds to me as if you believe that if you learn to prioritize better, you can do more than a job. And the implications that you can, if you find the optimum, you can do more than you really can do. This is also an entrance into a dilemma. Because no matter what then you decide, uh, it's not a solution. And the other thing is, uh, if you, for example, with your boss, have a conversation on set, then you need somehow f uh, a process that can decide. We, we decide for the one process to work on. And then it's acceptable what it brings as wins and what it brings as losses and what, what it cannot do. And very often, bosses are, both bosses are not ready uh, to... Uh, accept what you cannot do after having uh, built a priority. And then uh, the question is not of priority, the question is on having a responsibility cl clarifying relationship with him. 
and if you uh, uh, and he is the person and is, if he is saying it's not a problem and you know it is a problem, then uh, you have to find out what you can do them with then with him on a meta level. Say, see, you are ready to accept my priorities, but the next day you ask me why I did not do what was not in these priorities. And this causes a problem for me. How can we deal with that? Or you accept it, but three days later you act as if you did not have accepted it. And I feel the responsibility for your change in mind. How can we deal with that? So I'm very much in fond on, of not stepping forwards and being more engaged, but stepping one step back and look at the situation and have a communication about the situation and not acting in the situation. But this needs emotional and intellectual competence of all sides. And if you are in a culture where it's a taboo to talk like this, then you are, you are lost because you do not have the power to introduce that culture. Maybe you can help yourself by finding areas in the culture that are sensible to your way to do it, or you are in the wrong company. And even bosses sometimes are helpless to change culture, uh, because cultures uh, build up of a of a network, a dynamic network, network of habits. And if you bring a, one innovation to it, the network reacts by just eliminating this in, initiative. And the less power you have and the less competence you have, the less chances you have to change the culture. So, uh, where are we in time, Gieson? Should we have a... Should, Pardon? Another 15 minutes. 15? One time. OK. So I go back to my ideas about the program. Or do you want to um, just use these 15 minutes to sit together in small groups and share what came up to your mind and give yourself examples? I see some nodding. OK, do so. Groups of, of four about? Okay, for 15 minutes and then we have a break and then we go to the next point. Yeah, please move. That's the only way to come to a different place. Uh, is, are there actual questions or comments coming out of that to, to close up this topic? Yeah. There's, there's one, one question or comment. I don't find the other microphone. structure do we set up, I mean responsibility structure do we set up in order to facilitate the resolution of these, like in order to facilitate this pattern earlier, for example. So if I take complete responsibility for resolution of the dilemma situation, then that doesn't necessarily work out because there's no co cooperation that's coming from the other end. So there is some kind of sharing uh, to be set up and uh, an illustration of how this, such a sharing can take place would help clarify that. Yeah, thank you for this question. As always with cultural uh, things, there is no quick solution. So uh, to build up a culture uh, within, uh, there is an open communication and confrontation. This is a big thing. But even a culture that is tolerant for overtly telling about despair 
and inviting into analyzing that there might be an unsolvability or from which frame of reference is there an unsolvability and then in the community to deal with that, this is very high competence and I don't know, you can, there's no quick way to do that. But there are, uh, the more islands you uh, develop around yourself to build up elements of such a culture, the more such a culture will grow. There is no general solution to it. That's the first question. Just a moment, please. Or is that to this point? I think so. It's in line with what you asked. Uh, I think about uh, this question is in line with what you asked. Uh, uh, can you give us a framework? I understand that there is no good solution to it. Uh, can you give us guidelines or a framework where we understand, yes, we are in a dilemma, and these are the um, uh, approaches that we can adapt to come out of it or to arrive at the solution? I think I'm in line with that question. Yeah. Uh, see, because of the logics of the, the dilemma are, are often covered uh, and situations doesn't look like a dilemma, but when you act, you act on a frame of reference that includes a dilemma, but you don't know that you act on this frame of reference. So the early, and you cannot prevent to do so by skills or in advance, otherwise you would and produce a, an analyzing system that is totally overdone. So essential dilemmas, lim, dilemmata you will detect because you find out that you are in them. And the only thing I can tell you is the early you are ready to find out and this means meeting with non-confidence and non-despair and despair and the more, the earlier you dare to talk to others and invite others, and the more people share this kind of frame of reference, since then we should think about dilemmata, the better are the chances to detect dilemmata on the way. But uh, to try to avoid them, I don't know how to do that. And there are no clear skills. This is the reason uh, why I developed the dilemma circle. You can. If you ask yourself and others um, and have a trustful communication relationship, uh, honestly, do I feel competence or competent or do uh, confidence or do I do I have the, I have any idea at least in, an intuition that this is solvable, although we don't know the solution. Uh, uh, I forgot my sentence, but you, you, you should introduce this kind of culture uh, and then you have a chance slowly to get better on dilemmata. But uh, there's no way to, to be safe from dilemmata. So, and often you just don't know that you're on it. Yesterday in the morning after my, my um, um, guided imagery and the mood was wonderful here, and nobody was aware that we were already about in running into a dilemma. <laughs> okay, let's have the break now, and then we go to responsibilities. This had to do with your, your first question too. Okay, because dilemma is, is a, a, a high consult level. Dealing with responsibility within solvable frame of reference is the first step to it. <laughs>